All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at some very basic Excel skills just to help with the preparation of the results section of a practical investigation report. So what we've got here is a very crude, simplistic uh, experiment that links in with the circulatory system for year eight. So what I get students to do is they've taken their pulse rate for 15 seconds whilst lying down three times so we can evaluate the precision and then we can work out an average, do, repeat that for sitting, repeat that for standing. Then we get them to jog on the spot for a few minutes, only do that once due to the time constraints of the lesson, we take their heart rate and then again three minutes after recovery time. So I get them to average out that data for those first three trials and then basically we uh, record that manually on the board and then I get the students to manually type that into their spreadsheet. So if we look at this spreadsheet here it's not user friendly as it stands um, so what we need to do is tidy it up for the purpose of this video. So let's start by highlighting over all our data including headings. We'll go up to the alignment section and we'll just center it. So this is cosmetic I agree. Let's give it some grid lines if we go up to the font section and hit that drop down and give it some borders. I'm going to go with all borders here. Doesn't have a heading so when it when we have data in the results section or report we need a heading. So I'm just going to right click up here in, in row one and just hit insert and we've inserted a row. So let's type in heart rate during varying levels of activity. Alrighty, let's make it look like a heading. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag my cursor across all the way this data set holding my left finger down and then we want to merge and center um, that heading. So we just go up to here, merge and center. Um, that looks a bit better. Let's beef up our font size to about 16. That looks a bit better. Alrighty. Now, again, this is all our raw data. Now, the advantage of having it at this point here is before we get into calculating averages and all that, we can basically do a little bit of Excel work just to spot some outliers, and that's going to be useful in our analysis. So when you're um, we're going to do a data sort here, now what you need to do is highlight all of the data, including what student number they are, and then we're going to click on our data tab. Oops, not that one. Not draw data, sorry. And we want to do a sort. Now, I'm interested in this column here, column F. Um, let's see what we get when we do a data sort. I've just clicked on it. Um, if we go down here, sort by, let's go to um, recovery. And we want, yep, cell values. Let's yeah, go from smallest to largest. Okay. So look at this one here. 68. So student number 19 had a recovery of 68. This is an outlier when we look at the next lowest, 96, etc. So I'd be just encouraging my students to just take a note of that, that this student 19 is an outlier. Maybe there was a flaw in the way they measured the pulse rate. Let's go again. And this time, let's go with the same process. Let's do it for column B lying down. So again, we go over to data sort here. Uh, this time we want lying down and again, smallest to largest and have a look again. Student number 19 has got a resting heart rate of 28. Very unlikely, uh, very unlikely that that was accurate. So, um, and that's a good thing because that gives students something to discuss when they're evaluating the methodology going, there is some issues in terms of accuracy when measuring heart rate, but by using your fingers on a wrist, lacks accuracy and therefore validity. Okay, let's resort that. So again, this time we'll just go back 
into the student number, smallest to largest. So that's where we started. Alrighty. Now I want to, before we get into graphing, we need to calculate the average. Now I want my average not to be at the bottom of this data, to be, to be just under the headings, because that will make the graphing easier. So if I go into column four and I right click, I'm going to insert a row again. Okay. And I'm going to type in average in the first column. And what I want to do here is I want to calculate the average for all five conditions. So whenever we get Excel to perform a cal calculation, we always type in equals, which on my keyboard is next to my backspace. And then we just type in the word average, open bracket, because now we're going to highlight the cells. And I just go all the way down to that 20th student, drag with my mouse up to the first student. So I've got cells B5 to B24, as, it, as you can see there on the screen. I close bracket and then hit enter. Now, the beauty of Excel is rather than doing that five times, I can copy that formula. So control C. So make sure you're in the cell that you want to copy. And then I can just drag my mouse over from column C to F on the same row and hit control V. And now I've got my averages for all four. I'm just going to color these to make it uh, stand out a bit. Let's go with red font. Alrighty. So there's me my averages. So that's pretty much it for the data table. So when I want to paste that into Word, if it doesn't paste nicely, then what you can simply do is just take a screenshot. So uh, control print screen. And then when I go back to my Word doc, I can just go down to my results heading and um, hit paste. And then we can just do, if I right click that, I can crop it and I can make that nice and pretty on my results section uh, and just expand that. And then I've got my raw data with heading, etc. cetera. I can center that too. All right, there's more though. Let's, what we wanna do now is create a graph to visually highlight the differences. So for my graph, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to highlight my five conditions, just the headings in row three and the actual numbers in row four. So I've just highlighted those five columns um, and two rows. And then we go to insert. Now I'm going to go with a bar graph. I'm not looking at a trend. I want to have five discrete bars that we can visually compare. Um, let's go with a yeah, well, 2D column, a bit plain, I know. And there's my graph. Now, we need to um, basically add a bit more information here on our axes. So if I click into this cell, uh, then we can alter the heading. Um, so again, I'm just going to put HR during varying activity levels. Yep. And if I click on that, if I add, click on the plus button here, then I can add a bit more information to my access titles. So again, I just right click the graph, I hit the plus button, I hit the axis titles. And if I go here, all right, you always have to have axes titles because otherwise, what do these numbers mean? So I'm just going to type in heart rate, BPM. If you don't like abbreviations, put um, beats per minute. All right, and now I'm going to go down to this axis here, and I'm just going to type in um, different levels of activity. 
Now, I can mess with the font and all that sort of thing. If I want to pretty it up a bit, what I can do is I can uh, manipulate the colors. So if I just right click here, let's go with a nice orange one for that one. Right click that one. Let's make that oh, green. Let's make that one. So again, I'm just clicking on the individual bars and manipulating the color and recovery. Let's make that black. So there's my graph. So that one will be a bit easier to copy and paste into my results section. So uh, again, alrighty. So that is my results section.